Hey everyone, welcome to part 19 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So in the previous video we implemented stat boosting moves and in this video we will show the stat changes in our dialog box when a move is performed and we will also reset the boosted stats once the battle is over and finally we will use a speed stat to determine which Pokemon will get the first turn. Special thanks to all my Patreons for making this series possible. By becoming a Patreon, you can support me in the making of the series and get some cool rewards like access to the complete project files of the series. So let's get started. Okay, so now we are done with the stat boosting moves, right? But when a stat is boosted, we need to show that in the dialog instead of just printing it in the console. So one way we can achieve that is by returning a list of messages and then showing that in our dialog box. So that will work for stat boosting. But the thing is, when we implement status conditions like burn and poison, it will be a bit tricky to show the messages. So let's implement something that we can use for all our status changes. So in the Pokemon class, I'll create a new queue of string called status changes. Let me make that a property. So if you haven't used queue before, queue is used to store a list of elements like a list. But the difference is you can also take out elements from a queue. And when you take out elements, it will be in the order in which we added to the queue. So in our case, this is pretty helpful because the first message that we add to the queue should be shown first in our dialog box. So we can also use a list here if we want, but using a queue will simplify our code. So now we can push all our status changes messages into this queue. And from the battle system script, we will take out that message and show it in the dialog box. So in our apply boost function, if the boost is greater than zero, then we need to show that the stat was increased in the dialog. So I'll add that to our status changes queue. And to add something to a list, we use the add method, right? But when we want to add something to a queue, the method to use is nq. And if you want to take out an element from the queue, then we can use dq. So in this case, we want to add an we want to add a message so I'll just use NQ and I'll just add a message like Pokemon stat increased so I'll use base dot name to get the Pokemon's name also add the name of the stat and finally I'll say rose and otherwise if the boost is negative we'll just change this to fell okay so this will show Charmander's attack rows or Charmander's defense rows based on the stat. And one thing we have to notice is that we have to we have to initialize the queue before trying to add something to it. So yeah, let's just initialize it from here itself. Alright, so now in the battle system, once we apply the boost, we can take out the messages from the status changes queue and show it in our dialog box. So for that, I'll create a new function called show status changes. And this function is going to be a coroutine. And it'll take reference to a Pokemon as the parameter. So inside this function, we need to check if there are any messages inside the status changes queue and then show all of them in our dialog box. So I'll say while pokemon.statusChanges.count greater than zero, which means there is a message inside this queue. Then we'll just take that message out and print it in our dialog box. So to take a message out, we can use the DQ function and I'll show it in the message variable. And then we'll just show it 
in our dialog box. Okay, so now once we apply the boost, we will call the, the show status changes function for both the source and the target Pokemon. Okay, so we have built a system which we can reuse for all the other status effects. Okay, so we are done with that. So next, one thing we need to do is we need to reset the stat boost once the battle is over, right? So all we have to do is change the value of all the stats in our stat boost dictionary to zero. Just like we do when we initialize it. So I'll just put this inside a function so we can call that from multiple places and I'll just call the function reset stat boost and let me paste that so from here we can just call reset stat boost function so now inside our Pokemon class let's also create a function called on battle over which will be called once the battle will be over and inside this function we just have to call reset stat boost so now all we have to do is call the on battle over function for all the pokemons in the party once the battle is over so inside our battle system script we have our battle over class which will be called while ending a battle so in here we can say player party dot pokemons and we need to call the on battle over of all the pokemons right so i'll say for each pokemon call on battle over okay so this is a shorter way of writing for each using link you can just use the normal way if you find that more comfortable. So yeah, let's test the game to see if everything is working fine. Okay, so if I start a battle. And let me try using Growl. So yeah, you can see in the dialog box, it showed that Bulbasaur's attack fell. Okay, so that is working fine. And hopefully, all our stat boosts will be reset once the battle is over. Alright, so next let's implement something that we have been ignoring for all this time. So we have a speed stat inside our Pokemon, but we are not making use of the stat right now. So we should use the speed stat to determine which Pokemon gets the first move instead of just always giving the first move to our player Pokemon. So inside our battle system, I'll create a function called choose first turn. And in this function, we will check if the speed of the player Pokemon is greater than the speed of the enemy Pokemon. And in that case, we'll call the action selection function so that player can select an action. And otherwise, we let the enemy perform the move first. So we'll call the enemy move coroutine. Okay, so now in the setup battle, instead of just calling the action selection, we'll call choose first turn. So yeah, this will get a lot more complex in the future when we implement moves with priority like quick attack but yeah for now this should be enough and one more thing we have to do is when we switch our pokemon if we switched it because the current pokemon fainted then again we should call the choose first turn function instead of just giving the move to our enemy right so we need to check if we switched because of the current Pokemon fainted 
we can't check if the player unit dot hp equal to zero from here because we have already changed the player unit to the new pokemon so i'll use a variable to store that i'll create a variable called current pokemon fainted and i'll set it to true initially and if the hp is greater than zero then i'll set it to false and if we are switching since the current pokemon fainted then we'll have to call choose first turn and otherwise we'll just give the move to the enemy okay so now let's test that so let me start a battle so if i choose a move the charmander will attack first because charmander's speed is like much more greater than Barbasaur's. and now if i switch to a different pokemon the enemy will get the first move because my turn is over but if i switched it because my current one fainted then again we will use the speed to find out who should go first so let's try that okay so now my current pokemon fainted and now if i switch to charmander you can see that i get the first move because charmander has more speed so yeah our speed calculation is working fine so there is one more thing i want to do before we end the video so i want to encapsulate all the effects of a status move into a separate function so i'll create a function called run move fx and this function will take a reference to the move and the source and the target pokemon Okay, so let's copy the fx of the status move into our run move fx function. Okay, so here, since we are passing the Pokemon itself, we can just call the apply boost directly. So now we just have to call the run move fx function if the move is actually a status move so i'll pass the move pokemon of the source unit and that of the target unit also so the reason why i encapsulated into a separate function is because in the future status moves are going to have a lot more effects like status conditions and weather effects etc not just the stat boosting so let's just go to unity and test just to make sure that this didn't break anything okay let me start a battle so yeah it's working fine so i'll stop the video here if you think the series is helpful please leave a like on the video and subscribe to my channel to help it grow so i'll see you in the next video